Welcome to the valley today. We are here at the San Luis Wildlife Refuge. I got it right. You got We're it. We're with you Jack Sparks, and Jack is a native of California, a uh, native of Fresno. Went to Bullard High in Fresno State, and yep. then went to uh, Greater Things. Humboldt State. Yep. Humboldt State. <laughs> well, this is impressive. I, we didn't anticipate seeing this uh, opulence out in the middle of nowhere. But th this, this building is something to behold. And, and uh, of course, this preserve is something else, too. Well, thanks, and we're, we're happy to have you here. Yeah. We're very excited about it. This building is brand new, and it's a new visitor center. just opened in October, and it's uh, been a long time coming on this refuge. It's still got that new museum smell to Everything's it. Everything's still kind of shiny. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 How many people are working here? About uh, between, depending on the season, between 30 and 50 people work yeah. on this refuge. And uh, this refuge is quite large. It's about, what, 26,000 acres? Yeah, and this is a complex of refuges. We manage three refuges and a wildlife management area. The refuge we're on now, the San Luis National Wildlife Refuge, is 26,800 yeah. acres. And so you've got this education center here, and this is really, it's something else. Yes, we're in the exhibit hall of the brand new visitor center, and it's full of over 20 interactive exhibits. Yeah. And they kind of narrate the theme of the refuge and the story of the refuge, tell people what we do and why we're here. Yeah, this is, the this is great. So take us through. All right. Take us through here, Jack. It was, it was important for us that the, there's a variety of exhibits and that they be very tactile, that people actually have something to do when they come in, that it's not just coming in and reading the exhibit. So you'll notice there's all sorts of stuff to touch and feel and do and drawers to pull out and things to operate, but it all tells a story of what we do and why we're here. The first exhibit where we were initially standing kind of sets the stage and talks about the refuges across the country and that this refuge is located along the Pacific Flyway and what that means. That's basically a migration highway for birds along right. the Pacific coast. Then we get into the different types of habitats on the refuge and on this refuge we have wetland habitats with uh, managed water now that they don't occur naturally. We basically mimic mother nature and uh, upland habitats around the corner. We talk about the Thule elk, and they're kind of the mascot of the refuge. We have a herd of about 90 Thule elk on this refuge inside an enclosure that the public can actually drive around and view them. They're here all year long. And because you've uh, managed the habitat, you don't actually have to supplement their, their food. They are living off of, uh, of what's being managed. Correct. We just manage the habitat. We maintain the habitat in a natural state, and that gives them everything they need. Now, when I was going to Fresno State in the late 70s, I remember the Kesterson thing that happened, and this that's not too far from here, right? The Kesterson is part of this refuge, and back then it was a standalone refuge called the Kesterson National Wildlife Refuge. Right. Now it's the Kesterson unit of the San Luis National Wildlife Refuge. And because refuge. of the selenium that was getting leached uh, years ago, that really had a devastating effect on the wildlife, but this yep. has all come back now. It's all come back. The, this is that, all a healthy ecosystem That was cleaned now. up, and it's a very healthy ecosystem. Yeah, and I, I had no idea that I would be here interviewing you on something that has come back, has come full circle. It's, it's a beautiful place to be, and I feel very fortunate to yeah. work here. And driving around, this refuge is it's huge. It's 26,800 yeah. acres, and it gives you a glimpse of what this would have looked like, what the valley would have looked like before it was settled. Right, and, and this is really and has mostly been untouched. It's been, re well, there are parts of it that have never been touched, and then yeah. there are parts that have been restored back to a natural state. Right, right. Was any of this ever uh, farmland at one point, or? Parts of this refuge, I think, were farmland. I think other parts were mostly grazing land. Yeah. And, uh, and the grazing land wasn't as intensively modified as the farmland. Right. Would have well, continue with our, uh, with our tour here. All right, so we talked about the wetland habitats the upland habitats, the grassland habitats on the refuge, which are very unique places. And you can see a model of a San Joaquin kit fox, which is an endangered species. So this exhibit narrates the story of the, the kit fox. Do you guys have a real uh, a pulse of, of all the uh, different animals that are living here? We do. Uh, we have a biological staff that yeah. kind of keeps tabs on what should be here and what is here right. and of what is here, what numbers are they occurring in and is everything doing okay? Yeah. And if they're not doing okay, why might that be and what can right. we do? 
Because I guess uh, if, if the, uh, the, uh, the birds are healthy, probably most of the ecosystem is going to be healthy, right? It's kind of an indicator. Yeah. yeah. You want everything that's supposed to be here to be here. Right. And, and it's funny to talk about keeping tabs on what's here. We often will get rare occurrences of birds, and it's actually not our own staff, but birders that come in. Visitors to the refuge, Audubon. or avid bird watchers. I can Audubon, imagine Audubon is real strong here. And they're out here, and yeah, and it'll show up on a, a listserv someplace that, I was at the San Luis National Wildlife Refuge, and I saw this bird, and we see it. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so this building really is what, only a couple, uh, couple of months old? A couple of months old. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this was a product of uh, the Stimulus Act, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. So when did you break ground on this? We broke ground in 2009. It was, uh, I believe, June of 2009. Wow, this is just it's something to behold. Yeah. I, we, we were blown away when we drove up Good. there because we were not expecting this. Good. We were expecting a little outpost or something where People could come and, and, and see what the refuge was all about, but n nothing this grand. But this is really cool. And there's a lot to do here, even aside from this visitor center now, which has a lot to do, not only in the center and the exhibit hall, but the grounds immediately surrounding. We have three auto tour routes where you can drive your car around and yeah. you can view the elk, you can view waterfowl and other right. water birds. We have nature trails, we have a fishing area. You can come have a picnic and it's free. Wow. And uh, we really, we, we want to encourage more people to take advantage yeah. of this. Well, this is, this is very neat. So, uh, moving on. All right, and again, more for the kids, and we wanted to put a, a focus on providing exhibits for the kids and keep the little ones engaged. And when we yeah. designed this, we put a lot of thought into school groups coming through, and we would love to see school groups coming through here. So, high-rise living and more interactives. Push a button to figure out where the northern flicker lives within the canopy. Yeah. Where's the spotted toe live? Okay, down toward the bottom and a little periscope here to, to find some other hidden treasures up at the top. Wow. Something else. And then vernal pools, which are a, a very unique and spectacular habitat found on the refuge and uh, actually naturally occurring, which most of our wetlands now, we intensively manage. Vernal pools do everything they need to do on their own with rainfall and they're very unique habitats that support uh, beautiful color flower or wildflower shows and uh, and that. That's the only thing that I'm sad about is that we didn't come in uh, late spring when all the flowers would be popping here but still this, this the, the complex is still pretty I mean uh, there's you know. something different year round yeah and that's it. it it's for each season of the year it kind of looks a little bit different we have different species of wildlife here but there's something to do and something to see year round yeah so, so they're coming, they're, uh, they're, animals are coming north or coming south depending on the time of year and, uh, and using this as, a, uh, as yeah. a stop point. Yeah, we have uh, the ducks and geese which breed up north in Canada and Alaska and they fly south to spend the winter here yeah. and then we have birds like Swainson's hawks which spend the winter in Argentina and then they fly north to breed and spend the summer here. Yeah. So they're going all over. That yeah. is so interesting. Yeah. And then you've got a, a you've got a duck club here. We have a duck club, and this is uh, here in Merced County, in the land surrounding the refuge and on the refuge. Waterfowl hunting is a very long-standing tradition, and we wanted to interpret that in the exhibit hall. So we built a mock-up of a duck shack. And this is typically what a, what people would live in when they're uh, in season, uh, wanting to go after uh, the ducks. Kind of, you know, stylized. We took some liberties to make it yeah make it quaint, but uh, yeah, and it's talks about the waterfowl hunting heritage in the county and puts up some artifacts that are unique to the sport. That, and this is one of the things that kind of uh, uh, pushed to Los Banos along were, were these duck clubs, or these guys coming out of the uh, um, bigger towns to come here and hunt in the winter, right? Yeah, a lot of big names. In fact, one here that we have a photo of, Bean Crosby. Yeah, the Bengal. Out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what's interesting is, is that you allow hunting on, on the, uh, the refuge. We do allow hunting on the refuge, yeah. We have six priority public uses yeah. and uh, hunting, fishing, wildlife observation, environmental education, nature interpretation, and photography, and they all carry equal weight. So this, this really serves uh, a lot of different uh, needs for people that want to come here. They want to maybe go for a hike. They can see the wildlife if they want to come here and hunt or they want to come here and fish. 
all sorts of different things to do. Yeah. yeah. We have people coming here all throughout the year and, and for different reasons. So how do you get here? How do you get here? Yeah. How do you get here? <laughs> we are located about six miles north of Los Banos. Yeah. So to get here, say, from the Fresno area, you would take Highway 99 North to Highway 152 West, and then in Los Banos, take Mercy Springs Road or Highway 165 North about six miles to Wolfson Road, and there's a sign there at Wolfson that says San Luis National Wildlife Refuge, turn right, and then follow Wolfson to our entrance. Yeah. And we're just about maybe an hour and a half from Fresno. Yeah. Did this turn out the way that the, you guys had anticipated it when you saw it on the on the, the drawing board? I think it even exceeded our expectations. Yeah, yeah it was an exciting project to be involved with. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, this is as a taxpayer to see this. This is really it is something to behold. Good, you know, and it's something to be proud of. You know, I mean, if we we know that we we give money to the government to do things, but to be able to come here and see this tangibly used, I think is is just a really wonderful thing. Good, that's good yeah. to hear. Jack Sparks, thanks so much for hey. being on the Valley today. Thank you. And uh, what's the phone number if uh, people want to call and and get directions or get uh, times uh, when they can uh, when you guys are open. 209-826-3508, yeah. and we're open seven days a week seven from days a 8 week. to 4.30. Excellent. Jack Sparks on the <laughs> Valley today. Thanks so much, and you've done good for a Fresno kid. <laughs> and we are at the back of the San Luis National Wildlife Refuge, and I got that right, too. Yes, yep. And, and you're a biologist here with the, uh, the, with the refuge. Yes, I am, and, and it's a great time of year to visit because um, between late October and the end of February is when we have the most uh, water birds at the refuge yeah. and that's that's one of the things that this area is really and known for. And they're working for. their way south from the north. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. Well, let's we're going to sneak up on some right now, right? Yep. Yes, we are. Well, tell us about this area a little. Well, the um, this area is really one of the largest remaining freshwater wetland complexes in California. Uh, California has lost about 90 percent of its uh, freshwater wetlands and we're in the middle of about 210,000 acres of wetlands and uh, a wetland complex. And here we have about 8,000 acres of wetlands. And we manage these very intensively to produce the food and um, other resources needed by ducks, geese, swans, uh, things like sandpipers, lesser sandhill cranes, just a whole host of different species. And it seems like this ecosystem is, is a pretty strong and solid ecosystem now. It's doing quite well. Yeah. Thanks to, to the work of, of many, many people and, and the support of the, um, the American public. And uh, looking out across the, uh, this, uh, this refuge, uh, you guys have to, uh, you have to manage the grasses too. I mean, you have to, the, you do some mowing and you do some disking and. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's. And you do some burns too. You have controlled burns out here. Very intense management. Most of the, the wetland basins, like the one we're going to look at in a minute, are, are flooded up in late August and we hold the water on through March. But then it almost becomes like an agricultural enterprise because what we want to do is produce food for the migratory ducks and right. geese. And so what we'll do is we'll draw the water down and uh, the, the plants will grow and we'll irrigate them maybe twice during the summer to, to get the full growth and seed production. And then we, once we flood those up in the fall, there's plenty of uh, forage for those migratory birds. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Well, let's keep moving here. And then we're going to, what are the animals that we're going to be looking at here that we're well, coming up on? We're going to be looking at a number of species of ducks, such as a mallard, northern shoveler, uh, pintails, the green winged teal. And the green winged teal is our most abundant duck species here. And so how many animals are here now? Well, um, we've counted up to 20,000 ducks on this one uh, wetland unit. So um, this is, is one of our largest. Um, the air is just buzzing with, with uh, ducks and with wings. And OK, so yep. come on, Charles. Yep. We got it right here. So th what are we walking up on now? We're walk walking up on um, several hundred into the thousands of, uh, of ducks. And uh, um, they, these would be pintail, uh, mallards, and green winged teal principally. But there will also be some gobwall, some widgeon, and uh, tundra swans. We, we get tundra swans on this unit every winter. Wow. And we will also have the uh, white fronted geese, which are, are, some, are a species that migrate between Alaska and northern Canada and this, uh, this area of California. It's just, <laughs> this is something to behold. It really is. 
the air is just vibrating. And this, this is something that um, is really, uh, really inspiring to work at a place like this and actually see these concentrations of wildlife. Well, come on, Carl, let's see if we can get a little closer. I guess they're only going to let us get so close and they're going to... Look at that. Yep. Wow. I didn't anticipate this much. Yeah, see, there's some pintail right there. Oh, yep. yeah. Yeah. And that kind of peeping you hear, that's, uh, those are green winged teal. Just a state of flux. Yeah, those so are green winged teal, too. little guys. Huh. Yeah. All vegetarian? They eat seeds and yeah. uh, they, they also eat uh, invertebrates. So they're kind of omnivores. Yeah. They will eat plant matter and animal matter. And uh, when they first arrive here from the north, they're, they're pretty um, depleted of uh, fat reserves and they'll stock up on carbohydrates. But as the winter goes on, they switch to invertebrates and they, they take in more protein as they get ready for the breeding season. Hmm. And the breeding season is? Um, starting in the spring, from, starting in from the like spring. April onwards. Now, will they go north to breed or will they stay here? Uh, we have a few resident species. Um, we have mallard, uh, we get some cinnamon teal that nest, uh, wood ducks, but uh, by and large, um, the birds will leave yeah. by, by May. And where do they go to? Uh, in, up into um, the uh, prairie pothole region, some of them, but, but most into the Alaska and the northwest part of Canada. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Look at that, they just... Uh... I guess there's a couple of leaders, and uh, that triggers the rest of them to uh, take flight once uh, a couple of the lead birds. Yeah, yeah, they saw us coming and, and yeah. probably thought that predators were trying to sneak up on them. But what they'll do is they'll, they'll get up and then they'll just settle down a little further from us and go back to feeding. Right. Do they have sentries? Um, they're all pretty vigilant. Yeah? Yeah. So they're all always popping their head they're up. They're always, <laughs> they're pretty wary. Wow. But we are in a sanctuary area where um, there, there's not a lot of disturbance. So that's, that's right. probably why there's large uh, Are there times a year where you don't let the public back in here when they're, when they're uh, in the, the breeding mode? Or? We, large areas of the refuge are closed to the public. Yeah. So, but there are representative areas. We have three main habitat types. We have wetlands, um, riverine areas with trees, and then uplands. And we have representative areas open to the public with trails where there, a lot of wildlife can be seen. But probably um, more than half, maybe 70% of the refuge is actually closed to the public at all times. Yeah, and, and that, that, that leaves a nice uh, peaceful uh, habitat for them to uh, to exist in. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. What other animals we have here? We've got the tule elk. You were mentioning the white tail. Uh, black tail deer. Black tail deer. It's, it's a subspecies of the mule deer, and those were reintroduced uh, by the state of California, the Department of Fish and Game, and we entered into a cooperative agreement with the state yeah. to reintroduce them. And they're doing quite well. Right. Coyote, kit fox. Uh, kit fox are, are rare, yeah. although um, present. And we have lots of kangaroo rats. We have lots of rodents. Yeah. We have kangaroo rats. We have voles. We have um, mice. And then uh, snakes are quite abundant here uh -huh. as well. We have gopher snakes, um, California garter snakes. We have some giant garter snakes, although it's an endangered species. Oh, garter snakes, uh, the giant garter snake? The snakes giant garter snake is, is endangered. And those are found in some of the game management areas yeah. around here in the, um, the private lands. Has there been any, uh, has there been any uh, uh, issues with uh, managing the tule, the, these tule elk? The tule elk are doing really well. Yeah. The, our tule elk enclosure, which uh, it contains about 760 acres of prime habitat, was established in 1974. And we've served as a source population for this uh, elk subspecies. It's found only in California, so it's kind of special. Right. And it's an open country elk. And we we have restocked other areas like Point Reyes um, has National got elk up there. Seashore has gotten yeah. them from us, and the Wind Wolves Preserve, which is south of here, and uh, the population, which went through a bottleneck down to about 80 or 100, is now close to 4,000. Oh, good. So we've yeah. um, we've 
played a role, the refuge has played a because big role. Because that was what was feeding the miners 140, 150 years ago, wasn't it? Was yes. this, uh, all these tule elk in the, uh, in the valley? Yes. They and just slaughtering them just like, uh, just like swatting flies. Yeah, yeah, and the, um, the antelope and deer were also heavily <laughs> impacted. Yeah. but are, are starting to do better. Well, so. that's, that's great that we were, that the uh, state of California was able to uh, recognize that these species was almost done and, uh, you know, to bring them back to uh, yeah. fruition. Yeah, it's a success story. And, and a little bit north of here, um, as Jack mentioned, we have three refuges managed out of this complex. The San Joaquin River National Wildlife Refuge has a similar story with the Aleutian um, cackling goose, which is a small uh, Canada goose. It's just bigger than a mallard duck. And those were down to um, about 800 or 1,000. And uh, now there's over uh, 40,000 of them. So those have done extremely well with mm. protection. So what's in the future for this uh, refuge? I mean, you've got a new visitor center. There's always new challenges. We're, we're restoring wetlands on the eastern side of the San Joaquin River. So we are trying to, to produce more habitat, just like what we're looking at here, that will serve as the important uh, fall and wintering ground for waterfowl. And we also have the San Joaquin River Restoration Program, which right. is moving forward to bring salmon runs back to this part of uh, yeah, California. Yeah, they're finally getting water down the San Joaquin, and I guess it's the ground is soaking the water back up and finally creating a, a viaduct for this water to make it down to the delta. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's always something new happening, and, and um, really a, a great place to work and, and for others to visit. We want more visitors to come because sure. the highway's been closed um, for a bridge repair and that's uh, winding up and it's going to be a lot easier for people to get here. Yeah. And it's a great time to visit. So, so. how do people get here? Well, they, the, we're, we're conveniently located next to I-5 and also, so from I-5 you head east on Highway 152 until you get to Los Banos and then you head north on Highway 165. We're about eight miles north. And that's Mercy Springs Road. Mercy Springs Road. Yeah. And it's Wolfson Road, which is a right-hand turn yeah. off of uh, 165. And that, ta that takes you into this, this compound. Yes. It takes you by uh, where they were uh, signing people up to shoot ducks. Right. Um, it's true that um, hunters are very important partners in conservation. Right. A lot of programs that, that have been supported by the hunting community have actually purchase land for wetland conservation and uh, waterfowl conservation. And their fees and dues uh, help uh, support uh, 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 refuges like this also? Yes, they do. Yeah? Yep. They, they sure do. Wow. And there are special areas that hunting is permitted yeah. uh, on San Luis Refuge. So about 40% of this refuge is hunted for waterfowl during the waterfowl hunting season. And uh, Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays are the hunt days. So on those days, there are areas where the hunters are. So I guess the beginning of season, I guess you must have a, a flood of, of, do you only allow so many hunters uh, for the uh, property that they come on? Yes, it is, it yeah. is very um, well regulated and, and we want everybody to have a good opportunity to yeah. hunt and also a safe opportunity. Well, like I told Jack, uh, you know, the, uh, the tax money that we've, we've spent for this, this complex, it's just, it's something, it is really something to behold. And, you know, we, we, sometimes we don't see eye to eye as far as what our government's doing with the money, but I think this was money well spent. Great. You know, to be able to uh, have that as an education center and to, to have this land preserved for future generations, good job. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. glad you've enjoyed your visit, yeah. and please... And uh, if people are interested, people are naturally going to be interested yeah. in coming here, what's the phone number that they can reach you? Um, to, uh... It's 209-826-3508, uh, mm -hmm. and our visitor center is open from 8 to 4.30 every, every day. single day. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a, what's the website? Is there a website they can go to? Um, if they go to, to fws.gov, they yeah. will be able to click on National Wildlife Refuge System, yeah. and that will show a map of the United States. They click on California all the refuges will pop up. They click on the San Luis National Wildlife Refuge and it'll tell them everything they need to know. 